Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about Pernell Whitaker, one of the best defensive fighters I have ever come across, if not the best. Now, we have a big fight coming up this weekend. It's Keith Thurman against Manny Pacquiao. And going into that fight, I'm wondering how Thurman is going to deal with Pacquiao's speed and with Pacquiao's straight left hand. I'm going to be watching that fight, and Manny certainly is going to throw that straight left hand at some time in the fight. And I'll be wondering exactly how Thurman neutralizes it. Right? Whether Thurman's going to try to smother that left hand. Whether Thurman's going to be on Pacquiao's right side. How exactly is Thurman going to slow down Manny Pacquiao? Well, let me tell you, the great defensive fighters know their opponents before the fight. They enter the ring with a game plan on how to neutralize an opponent's strengths, how to make it look effortless to the point where the opponent isn't even in a position to use their strengths. <clears throat> now, years ago, one of the dominant figures in boxing, this is a figure you have to know, was Julio Cesar Chavez. Chavez was a big time body puncher, right? He would wilt guys. Guys wouldn't go the distance with Chavez, right? Chavez was heavy handed. Chavez also knew how to get you up against the ropes and how to take out your rib cage. He was a fearsome fighter. So he fights Pernell Whitaker. Now this is after Chavez was losing a fight against Meldrick Taylor. Taylor using a lot of hand speed and a lot of movement. Right, But in the last round of that fight, Chavez caught up to Meldrick Taylor, dropped him with seconds remaining in the bout. And referee Richard Steele ruled that Taylor could not continue, even though it's unlikely Chavez had enough time to get across the ring to even hit Taylor again. So against that backdrop, an unbeaten Julio Cesar Chavez Major body puncher, Julio Cesar Chavez. He fights Pernell Whitaker. Now, you've heard me here online talk about fighters who defensively need to have a hand up. Understand, above them, on the top rung, are guys who know you so well that they don't even need to have a hand up. They know your punch pattern. They know what you're throwing. They know how to roll with the punch, how to make it miss, how to lean, how to have their upper body on a swivel. Well, Pernell Whitaker was even beyond that. <clears throat> Pernell Whitaker knew where to be in the ring to prevent you from even trying to throw the punch. So if you're thinking about a great defensive fighter, what I want you to do is to look at the film of the Julio Cesar Chavez Pernell Whitaker fight. Count the body shots that Chavez, a great body puncher, is able to land on Whitaker. Look at the times that Whitaker is caught up against the ropes with Chavez. Ask yourself how Chavez's offense, the offense where he blows out Roger Mayweather, blows him out. Ask yourself why that offense is missing in the fight. Understand that Chavez was one of the best of his generation. How could an offensively gifted fighter like this have his offense completely taken away from him? True story, no, I'm really not someone who likes going to fights. What I actually prefer doing 
is going to events where the fight is showcased, right? I've been at fights, you know, bad views, bad seats, can't really see which punch landed and stuff like that. So I actually prefer being at parties where the telecast. So I went to Mazatlan, Mexico to visit France for the Chavez Pernell Whitaker fight. Right now, the crowd was a Chavez crowd. I believe I was the only African American in a room of about 400 people watching the closed circuit of the fight. Right? My group was American. We were, you know, cheering for Pernell. Everyone else was cheering for Chavez. You can imagine when they entered the ring, there was a roar in the room when Chavez entered the ring. You could have heard a coin drop when Pernell Whitaker entered the ring. So the fight started. And, you know, being loud Americans, my little group was going, oh, 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 whenever Pernell made a miss and stuff like that. At the end of the fight, Pernell jumps on the top ropes. It's even better than that. In the 12th round, right around when Meldrick Taylor got dropped by Chavez in the 12th round of a masterpiece, Chavez tries to come after Pernell Whitaker, and Pernell Whitaker waved at him, smiled and waved at him. The film's here on YouTube. And just moved away. You understood this was a coronation. So they announced the judges' scorecards, and they called it a draw. So I went out into the parking lot. As you can imagine, many people were drunk, right? Close circuit ends. I go out in the parking lot. Everyone in the building knew that, you know, I was rooting for Pernell Whitaker. So I was standing in the parking lot with a friend who spoke fluent Spanish. And a couple of guys came over to us. And the guys started talking and the guy said, lo siento, lo siento. You know, my friend said, hey, he's saying he's sorry. We talked a little bit. I speak some Spanish. The guy basically was saying, hey, your guy won the fight and stuff like that, right? This was just... Post-fight, a Pernell Whitaker fan talking to, with a Chavez fan. So after I finish talking to him, I look up. There are about 15 to 20 people around us. And they started talking about how they were Chavez fans. And they thought Pernell Whitaker had won the fight. Right? I'm just telling you, Whitaker was so good. That when an all-time great got a draw against Whitaker, many of his fans in Mazatlan, Mexico, felt a need to tell a Pernell Whitaker fan, we thought your guy won the fight. Well, fast forward a few years. You have another all-time great. He really was a great fighter, folks. I hope the younger generation looks at this guy and realizes how good he was. And that's Oscar De La Hoya. You knew Oscar was a Hall of Famer while Oscar was in his prime. Great fighter. Now, Oscar was inverted, right? He's, in my opinion, southpaw fighting orthodox. So his big punch was his lead punch. His left hand. The punch he, the hand he used for jabs was actually his knockout punch. Now, Oscar threw the punch at a weird angle, right? They called it at the time of 45. He wasn't throwing it this way. He wasn't throwing an uppercut. He was throwing a diagonal punch with a lot of power. That was hard to defend. What I want people to do is to look at the film of Pernell Whitaker against Oscar De La Hoya. Understand, Oscar's a great fighter at the time. Right? Great fighter in his prime. What I want you to do is to look at how Pernell Whitaker neutralized this. Oscar De La Hoya's left hand. Folks, it's breathtaking. It would be like watching Keith Thurman against Manny Pacquiao, where Manny Pacquiao, who I'm picking in that fight, can't land a straight left. Right? And what's amazing with it? Is Pernell Whitaker isn't catching it on his hands and stuff like that. 
No, he knows the position that Oscar De La Hoya has to be in to throw the punch. He's keeping him out of that position. Then when Oscar throws the punch, Purnell, many times, without putting a hand up, is somehow able to duck under it. Right? As you watch the fight, you understand this is defensive brilliance. De La Hoya looks frustrated. He can't believe how this guy is able to be right around him and is able to avoid his best punch. So you have two all-time great guys. The films are here on YouTube. Two all-time great guys. One guy, hellacious body puncher. Right? Chavez was great up top, too. But understand, you knew, if you were a Purnell fan, you knew Purnell was not going to get hit in the head. You knew that. The shock in that fight was Purnell also was not going to get hit in the body. Right? Against Oscar De La Hoya, a guy who had stopped countless guys, who had walked through Chavez, Right? You just assumed, oh, Oscar's going to land some big lefts. Can Purnell take his punch? By the end of the fight, the answer was, can Oscar land his punch? Right? The biggest compliment you can give to any fighter is to be able to look at his films and to see his greatness. When you look at Whitaker's films against some of the very best of his era, Julio Cesar Chavez, Oscar De La Hoya, I'm telling you both men, big time fighters, not just Hall of Famers, easy Hall of Famers, right? The guys who you hear they're eligible for the Hall, you say, okay, well, well, I know he's in, right? Guys like that were baffled by Pernell Whitaker's defense, right? Whitaker studied opponents. Whitaker knew how they thought. Whitaker was so good, he could drop his hands. Whitaker was so good that in a round where Chavez felt he needed a knockout, Whitaker could look at Chavez, smile, and wave at him. Whitaker's death is a big, big loss for boxing. But one thing is certain. I know when I personally am thinking of great defense and how to handle things like unorthodox left hooks and stuff like that, great body punching, I'm going to pull up Pernell Whitaker tapes because to me, they're the gold standard on how to do it defensively in boxing. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If there are other Whitaker fights that you want to draw the public's attention to, I hope you mention them in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.